Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We walk in the fruits of righteousness. Praise the Lord. God is good. He is good. You know what the fruits of righteousness are? You know, when you become a child of God, we were explaining in the previous program that you are a son. Whoever has received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, you receive the Spirit of God's Son into you. You receive the Spirit of God, which makes yeah. you a son of God. Yeah, isn't and the that fruits of righteousness, man, righteousness is talking about our right relationship with God. Mm. And now when so you exciting. say this, sometimes people will say, well, how can you liken us unto God? Yeah. God is way up there and we're way down here. No. But what does that mean? Well, we have received the same spirit as the Son. That's right. God says in many places. That's mm. so exciting. That should make you rejoice. Wow. You know, somebody may have forsaken you or something might have happened maybe in the relationship. But remember, you will never be heartbroken mm. when you have a relationship That's with God. So true. You will never be heartbroken. Mm. When, uh, yeah. when the fall happened, when Adam sinned, mm. I mean, God, I can imagine God going, Oh, I lost my relationship with Adam and I want that back. And he couldn't. I be, I'm sure God would have said, I can't wait to send Jesus into the earth for redemption, mm. to receive man back into right relationship yeah. with me. And that is what righteousness is all about. It may sound like a long word, righteousness, mm. but it simply means a right standing with God. You have the right to stand before God. Yeah, you do. And you know, like the song we were singing, um, actually, if you refer in Philippians chapter 1, Philippians 1 and verse 11, it says really clearly there, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, unto the glory and praise of our God. And you know, um, being filled with the fruits of righteousness actually means being filled with all God's blessings, mm. being filled with everything that He has for you. And that's what we're talking about. And if you're just joining us, we've been talking about you are a son and we're continuing our subject on how it is to be a son and that that is your position in Christ. Yeah. You know, you can tell people, I am a son of God. It's very, very, you know, uncommon in the world to hear that, but it should be common with you. And when they see you are a son, they will wonder, who is this child of God? Who mm. is this person? He's really different. And that's, that's what they right. should see in you, being a son of God. And you mm. know, uh, the Bible says um, in 2 Corinthians, I really love this verse. It's so powerful. You know, um, none of what we're sharing is anything to do with ourselves. It's mm. all there in God's word, plain and simple written. And all we got to do is dig into it. You know, I look at God's word as a treasure book. And I look at it as something where you got to dig in deep to find the gold, dig deep to find in those pearls out there. That's mm -hmm. what this verse says here. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, we have the treasure of God inside of our bodies. Our bodies are the earthen vessels walking mm -hmm. on the earth. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And like we said in the previous program, that the power is not of your own. It is of God. Notice that word treasure there. Yeah. We have this treasure inside of us. You know, having Jesus on the inside of you is a treasure. Mm. You should look at him that way. When you see him as a treasure, you will think, wow, I've got to dig in and find out some of the great things he has for me. You know, mm. you can't get the benefit of a treasure without seeking after mm. it. You've got to dig deep. You've got to seek after it. You know, there's an interesting scripture in Romans 6, 23. It says, the wages of sin is death. Mm. And while we're on the subject of a son of God, it just says this, Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin mm. is death. When we were serving sin in the world, mm. sin paid us wages. Yeah. And it was not a reasonable price. Mm. You serve sin and the result is death. death. Eternal separation from God. Mm. Not just death when you physically die. Mm. But I mean, losing out in, eternal, in eternity oh, yeah. is terrible. So you won't want to serve sin once you hear that. Mm. So, but it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Notice God doesn't say the price or the the price that you have to pay for me to give you my son. Mm. He says the gift of God. That means it's free. When you receive, when you have a birthday party and somebody gives you a gift, they don't say, I'll give you this, but you pay me something. Yeah. 
They don't Same say with that. God. Yeah. He gave us a free gift and that mm. was Jesus. And he said, fine, you don't deserve it, but I'm giving it to you because mm. I want you back. I mean, I want my relationship back with you. Mm. I love you so much. Yeah, that's why he calls us sons. That's why he calls us sons. So he's a treasure that he's given to us. Yeah. You know, Jesus on this earth, he couldn't do anything apart from hearing what his father did. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the keys of being a son is that you can't do, you can't live the life that God wants you to live on your own. Because you may have tried on your own and you can see how much a failure it brings. You know, you can't really be successful in this life without having God on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. You can't. And you may think that's hard to believe, but it is true. Why do people come to the end of themselves and they say, God, help me? They know there's something greater out there. Yeah. And there is something greater out there. You don't have to keep searching anymore. Mm. We're here to tell you that you have come to the right place. Yeah. Because you have come and found Jesus. And you know, you know, Satan, he may show you things that are pleasurable in this world, but it's really not pleasurable. It brings you to the place of disappointment. Mm. You know, it's temporal misery. happiness. Yeah. But when you come to be a son of God, you find out you found the greatest treasure on earth. Yeah. The greatest treasure. Yeah. Yeah, just so go on sons this. of God. You know, sons of God is a really privileged term. And you should be, I mean, if you're a child of God, you're born to the family of God, you should be excited. Mm. I have been, I'm in. I'm in the family of God. Mm. You know, there's the scripture in Romans. You may not need to turn to it, but I'll just read it. In Romans 8, in uh, verse... 19, it says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. All creation, even the people in the world, they're waiting for the sons of God to manifest themselves. Mm. I mean, we can't live like the world if we are separated, if we're chosen, if we're God's children mm. and we're holy. We can't blend in with yeah. the world. That doesn't mean you to get out of the world. Yeah, that, doesn't, that, mean that, that. doesn't mean that. It just means you don't live like them. You don't live like yeah. them. You don't do, you don't have the same desires, I mean, to sin like the way they do. Yeah. And you notice actually the, the countenance of a person who doesn't have Jesus is very miserable. Mm. You know, you can see that from their face and from the way they talk because they don't have the relationship with God. They don't have the relationship with Jesus because when you receive Jesus and you become a son, you receive joy. Mm. Your countenance changes. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, when you are a son, you can partake of the goodness of God. And let me tell you one thing, God is not poor. No. So when you, when you come to the family of God, you've come into a rich family. Oh, wow. A very rich family. Kingdom of God. I That's mean, right. Kingdom lifestyle. Kingdom not lifestyle is rich. Not a pauper lifestyle, not a just low lifestyle. Mm. Kingdom is a very privileged lifestyle. You serve a rich God and you serve a mm. wise God. Yeah. If you look at creation, you look at your own self, you know, we don't, a lot of things that are happening inside of our body, we don't even think, but mm. it's happening. Yeah. Like we grow and we change, but we don't really, you know, we don't think about it, but we see the changes and how is it happening? Because God is so who really wise. thinks about that should believe there is a God out there. Yeah. I want to know God. That's right. But when you become a son of God, you can know God. Yeah, you can know God. And the greatest thing is you don't have to see him physically to believe yeah. in him. His word is so wonderful, it is so real, it will work in your life. Mm. And the greatest thing is when you know that you are a son. The first thing is to receive this privilege and the enjoyment of, of having Jesus is knowing that you are a son. Mm. And a son can partake of everything that God has for him. Mm. A son can, that is possible. And I, you know, I was, as I was um, you know, thinking about this, the Lord just kind of um, put these kind of three things in me. He was talking about there are three partakers in the Bible that I found. Now, it, doesn't, it may not make sense, but to be a partaker, you know what it means to be, like you partake in something. Mm -hmm. Like say if somebody wants to do something, you partake of it. Now, God in His Word has made you a partaker of so many things. And I, I just want to quickly take you to this, because this is really part of what it means to be a son, is you partake in something new. And the first thing is in Hebrews, and I'm just going to take you there, real, go really slowly, so maybe you can take these down. Um, in Hebrews 3, now to be a son, you partake of the blessing. Just look at yourself as you're sitting with the king, in the table of the king. Mm. Everything the king has, you have. Mm. You know, God is not going to say, well, you can't partake of this, you can't have it. Well, if you are a son now, you can. Mm. You need to 
that is who you are. Otherwise, if you don't, the enemy will come and he will just put you down. Mm. But when in you, Psalm yeah. 23, it says, he has set before us a table in the presence That's of our exactly enemies. That's exactly right. He sets a table before us. It's not just talking about, you know, table of drinking and eating and stuff. Mm. It's talking about a table where you can receive healing, mm. prosperity. I mean, it's the most dignified life. Yeah, it's, it's the best. I mean, you just want to partake of that. You just yeah. want to come to that table all the time. Mm. And in Hebrews 3.1, let's just call this the three partakers. Okay, okay so um, we'll, we'll go through it really slowly and, and understand it. And you may wonder, what is this three partakers? Well, it's the most exciting thing you'll ever hear because when I read this in the Word, I got really excited. Mm -hmm. And let's just read in Hebrews 3, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren, so God is talking to you and I, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Now, I really want to take note of that, partakers of the heavenly calling. So when you become a son, you become a partaker of a heavenly calling. So it's no longer an earthly calling. No man called you into the family of God. No man could. Now, you may have heard somebody tell you about Jesus, but it was really God who called you into his family because mm -hmm. he is the one who calls us. So the first thing is that you can know that you are a partaker of the heavenly calling. It's a heavenly calling that God has called us. It's a heavenly lifestyle. You know, many of us, when we think of heaven, we think of a place full of peace mm -hmm. and we think of a place full of joy and happiness. Well, when you come to Jesus, you actually are in that heavenly realm. A partaker of the heavenly calling. You don't have to wait for the sweet by and by. Mm. You don't have to wait till everything gets good in eternity. Yeah. But you can be grateful that you can live a heavenly life here on earth. That's right. To be a partaker of the heavenly calling is the best that you could, best life that you could actually live. And mm. if it's the heavenly calling, you realize now I can't be living my life based on only earthly things. I base my life on the heavenly things of God. In Colossians, God tells us in chapter 3, He says to set your mind on things above, to set your mind. Mm -hmm. So it, God is really wanting every part of us. He wants a mind set on Him. When your mind is set on Him, you are easily free to receive from Him. Yeah. Because as a son, you've got to receive everything that God has for you. Mm -hmm. And He may even you know, tell you in certain decisions that you are about to make. He may show you certain things, maybe it's wrong or it's right. That's being a partaker of the heavenly calling, is to know, first of all, that when you become a son, you receive a heavenly calling. God has called you, not man, God called you in, into this heavenly calling. Being a partaker, that's mm -hmm. a great thing, and keeping your mind fixed on Him. So if it's a heavenly calling, I realize I got to keep my mind fixed on Him to receive the things of God. It's not an mm -hmm. earthly calling, right. it's a heavenly calling. And it's the highest, if it's a heavenly calling, it's the highest life ever. Mm. It's the highest life. Yeah. yeah. It's higher than living like a sinner. Mm. It's the highest life. You're a son of God. And you know, when we, when we become a son of God, actually, first thing that should happen is our spirit becomes born again. Mm. That happens. Yeah. But then what's the path that we need to do? A lot of people say, I want to do something for the Lord. What, what do I have to do? Okay, fine, God did the spirit rebirth in me or the born again work in me. What do I have to do? Mm. Well, we have to live like sons. And the first thing you need to do is to renew your mind to think like a son. Mm. You can't be thinking like the old way, like the world. And you can't be thinking like, well, I used to sin, so we'll change. Mm. Yeah. And how do you renew your mind? Get this word into your heart and it's not difficult you know it's not we're not saying that you know you have got to be like um, separate from the world you can't talk to the worldly people anymore renewing your mind simply means okay I used to do that but now I do it differently mm. and get the mind yeah. to be renewed your mind yeah. automatically when you receive Jesus you want to follow him yeah you want to because he does the change in your heart and when he does the change in your heart it's quite automatic for you to want to live like Jesus. You will know it inside that you've had a change. And that's what Jesus does. He, he changes the inside of our heart. So now our hearts just want to totally yield after God. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to do. And the best part is like we said before, you receive the power. When you receive Jesus, then you receive the Holy Spirit. And when you receive, it's a simple prayer. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
And when the Holy Spirit comes in, you receive that power. That power is what enables you to live the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't think it's really hard to live this life of Jesus. Because, you know, you may have heard people say it's hard to live the way God wants you to live. I'm telling you, it's the easiest life. Mm -hmm. I've been living it and I know it's easy. It's yeah, not hard. and sometimes that's the trouble that gets in the way. People mm. tell you, you can't do that, you're not good mm. enough. But when you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, remember this. If you get anything out of this program, just get this too. The Spirit of God which comes into you testifies only of Jesus. Mm. You, if the devil comes and says, you are no son of God, you mm. are a mere old sinner. I know you from then. Yeah. But you should rebuke those thoughts and say, no, I am a son of God. I am a child of God. I have the Spirit of God in the inside of me. That's right. If your old friends come and pull you back and say, nah, you used to do these things with mm. us. You can do them now. You're no different. I mean, you're the same on the outside. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you should say, my spirit is changed mm. and I'm not going to do those things anymore. Like you yeah. said, it should be automatic. It should be automatic. Mm -hmm. And you can't base your, uh, your self being a son on feelings. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, you already realize your feelings can't stay the same. You know, today they might be okay and tomorrow a little down. That's why when you live in Jesus, you realize it's no longer living on feelings. Mm -hmm. we, don't we don't deny feelings, you know, you yeah. can't. Sometimes feelings are really real at that moment. And sometimes, you know, when things are not gone right, it's, it's natural to feel unhappy. Mm -hmm. Something didn't turn out right in your life. But, you know, you know, certain times it happens like that. But, you know, the, you don't have to go the rest of your life living by your feelings. Because one thing when you realize about Jesus is he won't change. Mm -hmm. And if he calls you a son on the first day you got born again, he'll always call you a son. That's right. Yeah. That's and one thing. That's one thing to know that. You know, that father, he didn't throw the son when he left the house. Mm -hmm. That's a good story. He didn't throw. He didn't. He didn't. He, he just said, you know, he gave him a party. He threw a party for him. So he was so excited. He had just come, wasted all his money. And he came back to the father and the father received him back. Yeah. And you know, God was trying to show us that he is that. He has that same nature. Mm. He won't and throw us out. Even if you mess up, God will still love you back. He'll forgive you. Mm. He will not hold anything back against you. Mm. He loves you so much that he will take you back. That's why he calls us a son. Yeah. You know, who would come to the earth you know, being in glory and having everything and come as a man and die on a cross, the most horrible death ever. Mm -hmm. Who would want to do that? You know, somebody who has so much of love. And you know, from what I've heard, crucifixion is a, it's, it's terrible. It's the most horrible death anybody could think of. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, you know, he had no reason to go to the cross. There was no reason. You know, they, but they, because you see, when you look at the Pharisees and all, they were so controlled by the enemy, so controlled by the devil, that they just, they just decided, I'm not going to receive Jesus. You know, I can't confess him as the Christ. But when you realize what was happening behind the scenes was that God was trying to bring us back to him. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus had to go through the most horrible death ever, mm -hmm. to shed the highest price, blood. That was the only price that Jesus could uh, pay to mm. redeem us mankind. That's Blood. right. I mean, God could have said, I have a million angels. I'll give you one of them. I won't lose any. But mm. he said, I'm giving you what's most precious to me mm. and what's going to redeem you back. Yeah. And because he did that on the cross, you can now be a son. Mm. And, you know, just don't let your reasoning kind of, you know, battle with you and say, what does that mean? Jesus going to the cross so I can be a son? That's right. He went. He took everything that was totally against you. I mean, against mankind, sickness, poverty. He took everything on that cross mm. and he shed the blood. And, you, and like yeah. you mentioned in this partakers of a heavenly calling, when you think about partaking of something, let's think about the communion table for a minute. Mm. When you partake of the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus, what you're saying is, Lord, I'm giving over my sin to you, my old life. I'm trading my sorrow for your joy. Mm. I'm trading in my sickness for your healing. Mm. And that's what's happening that's when you're right. a partaker of the heavenly calling. That's right. Be being a son is the greatest life you could ever live. Know that you are a son. That's the mm. highest life you could live. And like we said, he came down to earth. And you have heard that, I'm sure, many times, or maybe you've never heard that. It's, it's one of the greatest price anybody could pay. 
because when he was on the cross, he was in so much pain, but he forgave us. And then he rose from the dead. And then when we received Jesus in our life, that big wall that was separating us from God, that was a big wall that was separating us from God. So we couldn't be a son. We were mm. actually slaves to the enemy. And the enemy, he, he definitely didn't bring us to the place of enjoyment. Mm, that's right. He could bring temporal happiness, but he could never bring you total peace. But only Jesus can. And he brings you to that place of being a son. And when you just, you know, maybe just stop for a moment and think what Jesus did for you so you could be a son. And like we say, it's a treasure. It's a gift. It's something you don't have to pay, but it's something that you've got to receive. Mm. And that's why he did that. And, you know, you know, I really sense that many of you out there really, you don't have that, you, you don't really understand that love. And you think that God is somebody that you've got to please with your works, but you don't. When you receive him, you become a son. That's right. You become a son. And when you come into that family of God, you realize how much there is to partake in. Mm. Just now we read, you are a partaker of the heavenly calling. You know, you are partakers of the highest calling. You may think the highest thing is some degree you've got. And that's wonderful, that's great. But it's not the highest. It's not the highest. It's not the highest place you could be in. The highest place you could be in is to know that you have a heavenly calling. Mm. You've been called by the Most High God. And you know, you know, when we think about what Jesus did for us, we won't ever have to go again thinking, am I worthy? Because you are. You are. You weren't worthy before, but you are worthy now to receive Jesus. Mm. You know, being a partaker of the heavenly calling is to know that you have a high calling. God has called you. So heaven, if heaven is full of healing, I can partake of healing. Mm. Heaven is full of peace, I can partake of peace. Mm. And you know, I was just thinking, you know, we should just go to the second point as well here, because it's so exciting. We are partakers of His divine nature. So the first thing is we are partaking of His heavenly calling, to know that you have received God inside of you, and that is the highest calling. The second mm. is partaking of His divine nature. Yeah. You know, you actually can receive everything that God has. You know, when you think of a nature, you think of characteristic. So when you think of God, God says in His Word, and I should take you to that scripture. You know, I'm not just blabbering here. I'm really talking from the scripture. So we'll just check that scripture out. Um, it's in Second Peter 1, 4. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. God says, Whereby are given unto us, that is to you and I. Remember, we are sons, so God is talking to us. He's not talking to strangers. Hmm. He's talking to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be there we go again partakers of partakers. the divine nature so what was the first one partakers, partakers of a heavenly calling and second you are partaking of his divine nature wow. yeah and you know when you think of that you are partaking divine of nature. god's nature it's not hard to know the things of god mm. you know god's promises are easy he said my burden is easy so when you partake of God, you're partaking of His characteristics, His nature. That's what happens at salvation. When you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, He takes away your old sin nature and He gives you His new righteous nature. Mm. So then whatever is God's is now yours. That's right. And He says here, you can partake of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm. So. Let me just, you know, we've got a few seconds here, but I really want to quickly, you know, elaborate on that. You are partaking of everything that God has. See, a nature is a characteristic of somebody. When you think that's, well, that's their nature. Yeah. Well, you know, God, He has a wonderful nature. So you don't have mm. to worry about partaking something bad. He has all good benefits. Mm. And, you know, just hold your place there for a minute and go with me to... Um, First Corinthians, let's just see what does this nature have? What does God's nature have? So you may say, okay, I'm partaking of God's nature. Well, what does it have? Let me just quickly read this out to you. In First Corinthians 1 and verse 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus. So you are a son in Jesus, mm -hmm. who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. 
Amen. Wow. You have wisdom. Amen. You know, you have, you have um, righteousness. You can come boldly to God's presence. You have wisdom. You have mm -hmm. the mind of Christ. You can know exactly what God is thinking. It's yeah, not hard to true. know it. You have it. He says you have it here. That's mm -hmm. his nature. Sanctification. You are made clean. You are made whole. And then redemption. His redemptive work on the cross. Brought so, you back from yeah. the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. I know. You're brought yeah. back. You're purchased property. That's right. So, you know, you're partaking of his divine nature. As a son of God, realize you have the nature of God. You can know exactly what God is thinking of you. You can know it. And it is possible because he said it in his word. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can get into the third one, but that's okay. I believe this has encouraged you today. And let's quickly pray. And maybe you have not received Jesus today. And I want to just pray a prayer of salvation. Maybe you could just say this out, to know that you are a son. This is how you start off, by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we come to you, we come to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, Father, I receive you. I receive you into my life. Into my life. Thank you. Thank you. For dying on the cross. For dying on the cross. Shedding your blood. Shedding your blood. And rising from the dead. And rising from the dead. So that I could be. So that I could be. A child of God. A child of God. I now invite you. I now invite you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of my sins. Of my sins. Wash me. Wash me. In your blood. In your blood. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.